Hi everybody. Today Ernesto and I are going to have a little time to talk about tobaccos from different countries and what they are, what they mean, and we're going to answer some questions that a lot of you know about. Ernesto, I know that you have a chance to work with a lot of tobaccos, you know, because you buy from different regions and all over the world. You know, so how can a consumer tell what the different tobacco is? Like if he looks at a cigar, can he learn or she learn to say, oh, that wrapper is from this country, that wrapper is this origin? It's, uh, it, you know, unless you're, you're around tobacco, you know, constantly, uh, it gets, you know, it gets a little bit difficult. Uh, because, for instance, you may see a Connecticut wrapper, and that Connecticut wrapper, you know, the seed, uh, you know, it's a Connecticut seed, it may come from Ecuador, the U.S., uh, Brazil, uh, so it's, it's a little bit difficult just by going with the color. You may see a tobacco from, uh, let's say, uh, in Ecuador, Habano. Now, it may be a Habano 2000, it may be a Carrillo 98, uh, it may be in uh, HVA, which right. is another very popular seed uh, that uh, is being grown now. Or you may see a Maduro. Mm -hmm. Now, usually the broadleaf Maduro, you can pretty much tell as opposed to a, a Mexican Maduro or an Arapiraca Maduro. But, you know, again, unless you're around tobacco, constantly you have the experience of looking at all these different tobaccos, it gets a little bit hard to, uh, you know, say, yeah, this tobacco is from this particular area. Yeah. So, a question of curiosity. You know, when you're, when you're buying tobacco, when you're, when you're thinking about your blends, you know, we have the different countries. We've got the USA, we've got Dominican, we've got Mexico, we've got Honduras, we've got Ecuador, we've got Nicaragua. Which is probably what a lot of consumers see a lot of out there, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the marketplace. So what, what's the real difference in the growing regions? You know, if you think about like USA tobacco, you know, how would you define that tobacco? And maybe not necessarily just nothing to do with the taste, but more with the way the tobacco is grown here in the U.S. And then we'll kind of go country by country and what makes you want the U.S. tobacco for something versus maybe a Mexican tobacco or something else. So, well, and not to bring taste up, because we're going to talk about taste down the road here well, in the conversation. Yeah, but, you know, it's, uh, for instance, down here in the United States, you know, you have the, uh, the Connecticut Valley where they grow right. a lot of brown leaf. They grow, right. uh, uh, you know, Connecticut shade. Uh, you have Pennsylvania. Right. You have Massachusetts. So. And it all boils down to the, uh, to the earth, to the soil. Okay. Uh, you can grow the same seed in these different states, and you're going to get a completely different uh, tobacco. Right. Uh, and of course, you know, the way that, that, that uh, it's grown down here, especially the, the broad leaf, mm -hmm. you know, they do a lot of the, uh, the bond curing and stalks. Right. In other countries, they may grow the broad leaf, but find that because of the weather, the atmosphere, they have to do it like, you know, single leaves. Kind right. Of, you know? Right. Uh, and the same goes for, for uh, you know, any other country. You may use the same seed that, you know, we use in, in Dominican, but when you grow it in Nicaragua or Honduras, you're going to get completely different uh, tobacco. Okay. All right. So, again, you know, the seed, it is to say, is very important, but also the soil, the microclimate in that particular mm -hmm. country is going to, you know, like, for instance, in Ecuador. Right. Whereby in Ecuador, you don't have to use the cheesecloth. Uh, when you grow the same tobacco, whether it be Connecticut or whatever, in Connecticut, you have to use it. In Nicaragua, you have to use it. In, in uh, Honduras, you have to use it. Uh, even in Dominican, because the sun is different, the microclimate is different. Right. In Ecuador, there's not as much sun mm -hmm. as there are in this country. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that, that brings me kind of to the next part where let's talk a little bit about taste. And, and let's take a Connecticut seed, because, you know, there is Connecticut seed that's grown throughout all these different regions. Yeah, but if you wanted to pick two, which are probably the most prevalent out there, is the either a U.S. Connecticut seed, mm -hmm. shade grown, versus an Ecuadorian Connecticut seed. Right. What are the different tastes in those because of the microclimate, because of the soil and the ground and the earth and everything they do with it? Well, the, the, for instance, the, the Connecticut at one time was you know very very popular you know, oh. here in the United States. Uh, mm -hmm. The thing with that uh, becomes an issue of cost okay. because of labor costs. You know, Everything in the is involved with it. Now, to me, that that's one of the uh, you know uh, one of the greatest best wrappers around. Right. 
But unfortunately, because of the fact that the cost, the, the, the production that needs to be nowadays, you know, the, the, the production that, that needs to be to, to produce so many Connecticut cigars out there. So a lot of people started growing in, in Ecuador. And uh, again, you know, you don't need the cheese cloth because there's mm-hmm. not as much sun. I find the, uh, the Connecticut, when it's properly aged, and I'm talking about, you know, five years mm-hmm. and above, mm-hmm. You get a very distinguished, uh, you know, smooth, uh, a little bit of creaminess, um, and it just adds so much to the blend itself. Now the Ecuadorian also, you don't have to age. You can, but you don't have to age as long. Well. But you get a completely different taste profile than you do from the uh, Connecticut. Okay. Again, it will add, you know, a little bit of that smoothness. Maybe the, the uh, Connecticut may have a little bit more spice. Very, very subtle. Mm-hmm which the Ecuadorian Connecticut, you know, may not, have, may not have as much. Now, when we're talking about Connecticut seed, there are different types of Connecticut seeds. And, you know, depending on where it's grown, they're going to use the different types of seed because of the, you know, the, the, uh, uh, all the different, uh, how do you say, uh, the climates, you right. know, the, uh, uh, whatever, you know, disease like blue mold or anything like that. They're more resistant. And you have to know which... Uh, Connecticut seed to grow where you're growing mm-hmm. because of that, you know. For instance, there's some great Connecticut seed being grown in, in Ecuador, okay. which we use, you yeah. know, some, and also in Honduras, and yeah. Jalapa, you know, and they're all different, you know. Right. Uh, and it's, you know, maybe the same seed in some cases. In other cases, it may be a different Connecticut seed because of the uh, planets. Right. So you. Sticking on the taste subject for a second, you know, I know you love uh, you love your good restaurants. So I'm going to kind of ask you some questions. If we were to go country by country, you know, what would be the characteristic of that country's? And I'll pick a specific maybe leaf in some situations also. But what would be that predominant characteristic? If it's sweet, spicy, salty, peppery, whatever it is. So you know, like USA Broadleaf. What would you say that predominant characteristic on that? And you know. Tobacco is well. That tobacco, you know, there's there's a little bit of a misconception. It goes back many years, you know, uh, where they said, well, if it's a dark tobacco, it's got to be really, you know, full body, strong, right. and people would shy away from it. Right. But that's not the case. No, not that's not the case anymore. You know, Connecticut uh, tobacco is more of a, uh, I find it like a creamier, uh, you know, taste. It does have a little bit of strength. Mm-hmm. It does have some strength to the to the uh, to the blend, depending on what the blend is. But it's also a cigar that balances out the, the blend a lot, yeah. and uh, you know I, I enjoy it uh, 